Yes, Steve. Good morning. Welcome to our worship today. I'm going to call today's worship a creative worship. <laughs> um, it was our uh, pleasure or our, our work as the elders to try to give Pastor Bangan a day off uh, so that uh, we have an elder-led service, but uh, he will be consecrating the elements for us to have a meeting today. But I also wanted to uh, mention to you that Francis is uh, ill and he, she uh, has surgery for tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to happen because she says she has flu-like symptoms and probably fever, so um, keep her in your prayers. We'll have to pray for her in the prayers of the church also, but I uh, just received that word early this morning about 8.30, so I uh, just want you to be aware of that uh, show. Pastor Bay, we thank you for uh, stepping in for the organ, and Gabriel and Nathan will be doing our prelude in just a minute, and I will be leading worship, and I will be reading uh, a sermon that Pastor Tom approved, or reviewed and approved, so... I'll be a sermon reader today, not a sermon preacher, but I will read it the best that I can. So I, I pray that that will go well. I have a couple of announcements. Um, Meg, if you would uh, come here and I'll let you have the microphone. Um, as you know, Easter's coming, not too far away. We have the Egg My Yard fundraiser for the youth again. So if you want to sign up for eggs in your yard, the youth will come and hide them for you. Um, $25 for 25 eggs, uh, $45 for 50 eggs, or $85, egg, $85 for 100 eggs. So just let us know. There is a sign up genius, and it came out yesterday in Dale's notes. So if you have, need that, or you can fill out the form here and give it to Sarah or I. Thank you. Kathy will be next. Got a lineup today. Uh, just to remind you, Easter Bunny Breakfast is two weeks away. You can sign up for um, being a volunteer for bringing um, juice or donuts or muffins. You can give them to the church the day before or whatever. Call me if you if you want to just give money. You don't want to be bothered. We can do that too, and we'll buy the um, food. Um, if if you have grandchildren or neighbors, please invite them. Uh, there is a flyer in the yesterday's. So thank you. You ready to begin? Or did you? No. You played the trailer. You played the trailer. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. I'm sorry, we normally have the announcement before that, but that's okay. Uh, Steve has one more announcement. I thank you for your patience to get through this. Uh, I think this is a very important announcement from our call committee. Good one. Morning. Uh, for those that do not know me, my name is uh, Steve Lorenz. Louder. Here, have this. Okay. Okay, let's try that. Um, for those that do not know me, my name is uh, Steve Lorenz, and I serve as the uh, call committee chair. Uh, yesterday, I received a uh, letter, email from uh, Pastor Tyson Laboon and to request that I uh, share this with you. So, uh, dear members of St. John's Lutheran Church, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is with, a, it is with heart filled gratitude and humility that I accept your call to serve as your next speaker from this Despite the length of time since my visit, your warm welcome and spirit of genuine fellowship continue to touch me deeply, so much so that I am eager to join you in ministry as we journey together in faith. As I reflect on this upcoming journey together, which has led me to this point, I feel a sense of purpose and excitement about serving as your pastor. Your commitment to worship discipleship through your school and service to your community is evident and I am inspired by the ways that you have faithfully served our Lord and one another I want to listen learn and grow with you as we seek God's will for your congregation and community together we will be able to explore God's word deepen relationships and outreach in meaningful 
ways that generally reflect the love and grace that our Lord Jesus Christ has for all. So I am deeply grateful for your trust and confidence in me, and I pledge that I will serve you with integrity, compassion, and dedication. Trusting your Lord's guidance, I am confident that we will be able to continue to grow in faith and support one another as we witness the power of God's law and gospel. Throughout this process, and as I transition into this new role, I pray that you will remain steadfast in prayer, united in purpose, repentant of sin, and be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit, so that our ministry together might be a source of blessing and encouragement to one another, as well as to those around us. Thank you again for the privilege of serving as your senior administrative pastor. I'm looking forward to the opportunities and challenges our gracious Lord has already preordained for us to experience as we follow him together. God's abundant peace be with you. Pastor Tyson Laboon. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. We begin in the name of our God, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty oh God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father has had mercy upon us, and has given His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. The Kyrie. lesson is Numbers 21. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. 
The second lesson is Ephesians 2. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we have his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John's, the third chapter. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. We'll now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and children, would you please come forward for your message with Mr. Steve. Say what? Your phone's bleeding. You gotta turn this thing down. <laughs> Your phone's 
turn this thing on. Okay, say what now? Your phone's ringing. Your phone's ringing. Your phone's ringing. What? No way. Who's calling him? Oh. oh, too late. I guess I missed that call. Oh, yeah, I guess it, it says God. God is calling me? Yeah. I didn't even hear it. I did. I must have been distracted by all this music and everything. And I got my Facebook I got to look at. I've got emails. Uh, I got stuff I got to do. You know, I got to go to the YMCA and work out and everything. I ain't got time. I ain't got time to listen. I got, I've got my other stuff I'm listening to. I'm grooving, you know, don't you know? I'm in, I'm in it. I'm in the groove. Well, huh. stop grooving and listening so, and listen to God. I guess I probably should take time to check my phone once in a while and see what's happening. If God's calling me, yeah. no, that's he's important. Calling you in, in his, your head. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's other people that are trying to get a hold of me too. <laughs> but you know what? Even Jesus had trouble trying to get people to, people's attention, you know, and get them to listen to him. Now check this out. This is in Mark chapter four. Now this you guys know this story about the parable of the parables that Jesus told the, uh, the people at the time, and he was trying to get their attention. So when he started teaching them the parable of the sower, you know what he first said to them? Listen! It's an exclamation point right there. Listen! I got something to tell you. Listen to me. And then you know what he said after he got done tell telling the parable? He who has ears to hear, what? Let him hear. Now you don't think it was just he wanted them to just hear it, do you think? Well, I can hear music and stuff like that. But I think what he was really trying to say was, understand what I'm saying. This is super important. Listen. If you walk out into the street without looking to the left and the right, you might get run over. Yeah. Don't you think your mom and dad told you that when you were little? Listen to me. It doesn't mean just hear what I have to say and then go about your day as if you never heard it. It's listen. Take it into your mind. Think about what I'm saying. That's what Jesus is trying to tell these people. They're acting act like they were like dead, dead to the world. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that phone call. I was dead to the world. I was dead to that phone call. In Ephesians 2.1 it says, You were dead in your trespasses and sins. Well, maybe we couldn't even hear God. You know, For those of us that came to Jesus later on in life, we look back on our life and say, That whole section before I heard Jesus, I was as if I was kind of like dead. To his message, right? But it also says that's uh, the sad thing, really, is that sometimes it takes us a long time to come to the Lord Jesus. But it also is important to know, and in Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Right? So if we hear the Word of God, it can get inside of us, and we can understand that Jesus died for us, that he loves us, right? And that he died for our sins. That's the hope that we have. So I'll pray and then you guys pray too, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you that, though I was dead, you helped me to hear the message of your love. In the name of Christ, amen. Well, thanks for coming up. I got this for you and then I got to go take care of this phone call. Uh, yeah. We'll continue on with yeah. 744, yeah. Amazing Grace. Yeah.
again, I want to just mention that uh, I am reading a sermon as uh, I've been given to that as an elder, uh, but was written by a pastor, and Pastor Tom did review and approve, so thank you for his uh, assistance in this. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are a rock and our salvation. Amen. The uh, text on which I'm basing this meditation on is from uh, Ephesians 2, 4, and 5, which uh, Cheryl wrote, read earlier. And I'm just going to read it again. But God, being rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved and raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be with you and from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, have you ever tried to wake up a teenager in their sleep? <laughs> you better be careful, it's not always easy. You might call out to them and say, hey, school is going to start in a little bit. Come on, you got to go. And they may pull the covers over their heads or say, I'm not ready, I'm not feeling well, I don't want to go. Or have you ever called someone to supper? The food was ready and hot. And they said, now nah, I'm, I'm watching this football game. I'll be there in a little bit. It's going to get cold. My mom was never, never understanding about that. You come when it's hot or you're not going to come at all and you're going to eat a bologna sandwich later. <laughs> Have you ever tried to call someone for help? You've got to lift a piece of furniture, or you've got to move something, or you've got to fix something. But they decided, eh, I, I'm not feeling it. I'm sorry. Get somebody else. You know, you probably wouldn't have called these people if you didn't think they were going to react or take action in a favorable way. I mean, let's think of this. Have you ever called out to your lawnmower? <laughs> And try to say, hey, cut the grass, bag it, and put it in the garbage for me, please, huh? Or how about the sink, the kitchen sink and the faucet? Would you please wash those dirty dishes, please, and stack them up in the, in the drying rack? No. Even your washing machine, you call it it. I mean, it's going to do the job for you. It's got a timer. It's got some sensors. It's going to wash the clothes. Does it really do it because it loves you? Is it doing it because you called out to it? No, it's, it's an inanimate object. You're not, you're not going to be able to get any kind, of, any kind of sympathy or benevolence from a washing machine until someone loads it with wash and they push the buttons and get it started on its task. In our epistle reading today, St. Paul is speaking to the early Christians of Ephesus about another kind of lifelessness, not responding, a spiritual lifelessness. The condition that has affected all of us, when we were born, we were not of God. He created us, He knit us together, He brought us to life, but that life was of sin. Paul puts it that we were dead in our sins. And you were dead, he says, in your trespasses and sins. Essentially, disobedient heathen toward God. The truly spiritual dead are incapable of any action, any thought, any movement toward or away from anything. Therefore, in spiritual things, man is even worse than a stick or a stone that can neither desire something nor do it. In fact, we were unable to do anything about the world that we were born into. And as fallen people, we were unable to turn this existence that we were born into around. We were not able to change our hearts of stone we could not make ourselves be born again to God. A person who is bodily dead cannot contribute to becoming alive again in its earthly body. And so in like matter, an unconverted, spiritually dead person cannot contribute to their becoming alive spiritually. A person can't convert themselves or contribute to their conversion in the very least. We can only be awakened spiritually by God's power and grace. Therefore, St. Paul writes, God, being rich in mercy because of his great love for us, our creation, that even when we were dead in our trespasses, whether we are two weeks old, a year old, 
or 30 years old. He called us back to life with Christ. This sounds a lot like our gospel reading today where we hear the comforting and familiar words of John 3, 16. It would be all read with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. At the beginning of the gospel of John, we hear how it, it was that Jesus was, was called the life and the light of men. Jesus would later speak of himself as the way, the truth, and the life. And that apart from him, there was no way to get to the Father, no way to be a part of the kingdom of God, no way to enter heaven without this truth, that there is no life with the Father, no life in his kingdom, no life along the road as Jesus, unless you have Jesus as your way, as your truth, and your life. He is calling us out of the darkness, into his marvelous light. Do you hear him? Can you hear him, like Steve said? Or are you being distracted by the headphones of life on your ears? And you don't really hear what the Lord is calling you to do as Christians, brothers and sisters of Christ. We are unable to hear him on our own. We cannot know his truth or walk in his ways or live his new life except God who does it for us. The Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and strength, sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and us. St. Paul says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. You can't brag about it. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, I am. No, can't brag about it. For it is all God's work. It is His gift, not a result of works that no one can boast. Dead men may have monuments built to them, they boast, might boast of their worldly achievements. These days you might even be able to find an audio recording or film footage of great men of the last century speaking their wonderful speeches. But it would only be a recording. Physical dead men or women can say nothing of their works. The spiritually dead will have nothing to say on their works on the last day because they will have no words to say to the Lord without Christ. And the spiritually alive person will know that they only have life because of the grace. As such, they won't be able to take any credit for that. For all their works will be the results of Jesus' actions. Jesus' work. This is why Paul says, For we are God's workmanship created, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God himself prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. In part of Martin Luther's morning prayer, he prays that God, his Father, would keep him from sin and every evil, so that all his doings and life would be pleasing to him. And then he prays, into your hands, Father, I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, and let your holy angel be with me, so that the evil foe may not have any power over me. This is a good prayer to pray to begin your day, because... The spiritual and religious life of a Christian is not an easy one, even though we have been made alive in Christ Jesus. For as it said in our readings today, the Holy Spirit must be at work in us because the evil prince of this world is active and he's gunning for us. In fact, he hates us the most because we are of Christ. He wants us to return to the land of the spiritually dead Satan's work is to turn us away from our lives of repentance, our lives turned toward God, and our lives used in service to our neighbor. His desire is to turn us toward our selfish self, be thrown into the abyss of eternal darkness to where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. How will he try to do this? He will seek to use your passions of your own flesh, to tempt you to abandon your faith and to entice you to carry out the desires of your body and your mind. And this will only lead to sorrow and heartbreak, of sadness and destruction. The peace of this world is not true peace. He may use even the death of a family member, the divorce in a marriage, the ruin of a friendship, the personal pain of depression. All this is done to tempt and pull you away from your baptism, away from the promises you receive there by grace. The blood of Christ shed for you at the cross on Good Friday. How can we resist these temptations? 
How can we remain strong in our faith through Christ? Through His Holy Word. Through prayer. Through worship. Through Christian fellowship. Through the Lord's Supper. In the hard days, remember that God is rich in mercy. Remember that His love is great and that His forgiveness is for you. And that He is the one who makes the dead alive again. His joy is the resurrection and the life. He gives you ears to hear these words, as Steve was saying before. He gives you the heart to act on them. He gives you the life to live them out in Christ Jesus, who knows what is before you, because He's been there. He's seen what it's like to live in this earth. And He knows everything about us. He's seen the life before, and our life now. And He knows the life ahead. For what is behind us, Jesus has forgiven. For every step in which you will stumble and fall as you walk ahead in the blood of Christ, he's already there with us, with his forgiveness. Fear not, he said, take heart, no matter how dark the future may look from where you sit today, what is that ever is heavy on your heart? By the grace of God, you have the light and life of Christ within you. Jesus is the light and the life of men. St. John's writes, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Satan is now at work with his sons of disobedience, and however dreadful he might be, his fury is limited. His days are numbered. His defeat at the cross will be an eternal defeat, and his darkness is doomed to the light and life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our Old Testament lesson, the children of Israel were turning away from God and sinning by speaking against God and against Moses. And the Lord called them to repentance by sending fiery serpents, which bit the people so that many people of Israel died. That got their attention. They woke up. The people then confessed their sin, and the Lord then provided a rescue from death. He instructed Moses to make a fiery serpent, a bronze serpent, set up on a pole so that if, if anybody got bit by the serpents that all they would do is look up to the bronze serpent and live. Why would God do that? Why did he just send the serpents away? Because this was an act of faith, an act of trust. To trust God's promise from Moses that the bronze serpent would bring life, not death. And they would look up and be saved. Thus God sent his son into the world to be sin for us and then be lifted up on the pole of the cross. That whoever looks up to him in faith may have eternal life. By his cross, the light has come into the world, not for condemnation, but that the world might be saved through him. While we were dead in our trespasses and sin, in which we once lived, God loved us, called us to repentance, and raised us up with Christ to live with him in the heavenly places. When you call out to Jesus, he's not asleep. He hears you. He acts. He accepts your invitation. Psalm 145, 18 says, The Lord is near all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He will respond to your call for help. We look up to the cross, and we are saved. You see, you were rescued from the spiritual death by the waters of baptism that were poured over your head, and the command of the Word of God that poured over your eardrums, whether you were a little baby, I don't remember, I was a month old, maybe some of you might be as adults were baptized, and you remember that day, or child, maybe as a child, but it was said, and it was done, and God connected Himself to us, and saying, you are mine, and my name is upon you, and my spirit is in you. So in that moment, we receive the very light and life of Christ. And now we have an opportunity to come today to partake of the Lord's Supper and be able to feel the presence of Jesus Christ in, with, and under the body and blood and wine, bread and wine. So that we have that assurance. I always think of that when I talk confirmation. Holy Communion is like when Jesus comes and gives us a hug. We talked about a hug this morning. 
in Bible class, the support and encouragement that we have, the reassurance that Jesus gives to us when we partake of his body and blood, that we know that he's with us and that he's supporting us and that we can endure all things through him. So now God is calling us out to his grace. And the Holy Spirit enables us to be able to listen, take those headphones off, be able to listen to his word and respond as a new creation in Christ. Each day is a new day in the Lord. We rejoice and we're glad in each day that we are given. He calls us up from this, our spiritual bed and you answer his call. And being at this place of worship today, I know it's a little hard. We lost an hour last night. Uh, you know, but you guys came to come and worship. You are here with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to give glory, honor, and praises to Him. As St. Peter writes, who called you out of the darkness into His marvelous light, you are here at His calling to listen to His word. You are here at His calling to repent and receive His grace and absolution. You are here at His calling to be reassured along with other brothers and sisters in Christ as members of His family and counted as one of His people. St. Peter also writes, Once you were not a people, you were spiritually dead. But now, because of his great love, you are a people, a people of God. He has made us alive together with Christ, Peter continues. Once you have received mercy, you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This great goodness is not only for today, but it's also for every day of our life that we're here on earth. And Christ Jesus then will take us from this earthly realm to be with him in heaven. In the book of Lamentations, we hear these words. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. His faithfulness is great. Greater than ours. And the writer of Lamentations then concludes, The Lord is my portion. Therefore I will hope in Him. You too have this hope. Because He is the one who is calling you. And He saves you through His grace alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. Poor sinners that we are, and fall afresh on us. Guide us this week by your Holy Spirit to hear your calling and to respond according to your will. We thank and praise your name for your love and your forgiveness. You are faithful in all things. Lead us to reflect your love to others and set our hearts and minds on the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And keep our eyes always looking up to you for our salvation. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. God requires anthem.
Let us please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. First of all, Holy Father, we give you all praise, glory, and honor that you have found it in your wisdom to lead Pastor Tyson to become our next pastor. We pray, Father, that you would keep him safe, that you would guard and keep us as we continue to pray for him in the time that he will then come to serve us. Father, we pray that you would bless his ministry among us and our ministry with him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, daily you bring us to your light where you see, where we see ourselves as your people of old. We have thoughts, words, and actions that are not always for you, and that we come to you then in repentance, that we might be able to look up to your Son, lifted on the cross, to be saved from your righteous wrath. Whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but will have eternal life. Bless the work of missionaries and pastors who carry this holy gospel to the ends of the earth, that many may hear your calling out for their salvation, and see your love in Jesus Christ, and be saved through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we give thanks and praise to you for your many blessings through our school ministry. We give thanks for our teachers and staff who daily bring the love of Jesus through our academic lessons in class. We praise your name for all Lutheran schools across America in the celebration that we had this past week of the National Lutheran School Week. It was an exciting week of fun, Father. The remembrance to your wonderful work that these schools are accomplishing through you as they lead their children and their families to God's Word and Jesus Christ. Bless and keep all our Lutheran schools in your care, that they may grow and flourish for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have set Joe Biden <coughs> as our president, wrote Roy Cooper as our governor, as authorities over us for our good. Bless and sustain them with all they need to govern us, that they might be ruled, that we might be ruled wisely in accordance with your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as you lifted Moses, as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness, thereby foreshadowing your own sons lifting up on the cross, teach us to hear in the Old Testament the promises and pictures of the coming Christ, who is their Savior and also ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For God, Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are light in our salvation. Hide in your strong arms and caring hands those who are on our heart this day who need healing and comfort. We, we pray quietly as we go. We especially pray for Francis, our organist. She has surgery for tomorrow, Father, but you will guide the doctors to determine how best would go for her. We pray also for Karen Scott and Rosie Thompson as they were in the hospital emergency room last evening. Father, we pray that they're recovering well at home. For all these things, Father, possible for you, please give all who suffer in body and mind or soul a calmness of knowing you are with them during this time of suffering, and that you will keep them from falling into faithless fear, and you will uphold them with your peace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord, whose steadfast love endures forever, we lift our voices in thanksgiving, for you have redeemed us out of our troubles and gathered us here at your altar to feed us so that our souls may not faint within us, but be assured of Christ's true presence in this sacrament. Satisfy the longing of our hearts with your Son's body and blood, that we may abide in your eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you have made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sin. Cause your Spirit to be at work in us, that we may not carry out our sinful desires of our bodies and mind, but be the workmanship in Christ as you designed walking in the good works that you've prepared for us. So into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now go to the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give you thanks and grace. It is true, truly good, right, and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. 
Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when, we, when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Amen. Amen. I just was to say, uh, at the end of this month, our beloved Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Becker uh, will be moving to Baltimore, Maryland. If you have the time and the inclination to prepare a card and wish them well as they go on their journey. Joel Specker served here for 40 years as a Lutheran teacher, uh, as the organist, and as the choir director. He, he was a real blessing to St. John's, and he continues uh, to be a blessing to his family wherever he goes. Uh, as you are able, thank you. Thank you. And we'll probably have uh, a going away reception for Joel and Ruth sometime later this month. We'll keep you posted on that. But yes, that, thank you, Don, for that. All right. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Make it a great week. In Jesus' name, amen.